All right, guys, there are some things I want to get done tonight. Uh, there are some bright objects in the sky that I want to take images of, and there's other bright objects in the sky trying to prevent me from doing that. Uh, I'm going to be using a lot of uh, complicated technology and equipment to try to get the job done in hopes of capturing uh, some really good data on the Andromeda Galaxy. Let's go. <laughs> All right, so where are we? Uh, the family and I made it to beautiful BC. We're in a small town called Cranbrook uh, in the mountains. And uh, yeah, there's views of the mountains everywhere we look. Tonight's plan is to shoot the Andromeda Galaxy. Uh, this is an object that I've shot before, but uh, it was the first time I used my Raza when I shot that object. So my plan is to do about 30 seconds of exposure tonight, and I'm gonna do a lot of it. And the reason for that is because I'm in kind of a light polluted area. We're in a Bortle 5 zone, but uh, it's still going to be a great comparison to see what my Andromeda looks like before in Toronto in a Bortle 9 zone compared to uh, what it can look like here in a Bortle 5. Looks like I'm not the only one with a 6SC telescope at this park. Though it looks like that one's set up for visual astronomy. And I have to go and say hi to that guy later on. I'm also going to be doing something new tonight, which is using the acquisition software called NINA. Um, that's an acronym. Nighttime Imaging and Astrophotography, I think? Acquisition? I'm not sure. Regardless, it's a, a new piece of open source software that is uh, making the rounds and uh, everyone's recommending that I try it. Uh, since the last time I had troubles with EQMod, um, I might as well switch to something new. Uh, NINA is a, a newer program and again, open source, so it seems more up to date than uh, EQMod and, and Stellarium Scope. Um, but yeah, hopefully no troubles arise tonight. Even though I am trying something new, I'm, I'm sure something will go wrong. But uh, I did a lot of preparation, got some things set up, and I haven't done any subs or anything. But uh, that'll be the test tonight to see if I can get up and running. I would like to give a shout out to Side the Lazy Geek. He has another astrophotography channel and he's done many videos on Nina. And those videos helped me get Nina set up and running. I plan to do a few other things tonight, which is new to me. Uh, first off is plate solving. I'd love to be able to take advantage of plate solving. I've downloaded the ASTAP uh, database and put it into Nina, so it should be ready to go. And the other thing that I would love to try is using uh, my autofocuser. I do have an autofocuser and I use the Celestron uh, application to, to gain focus, but I haven't used any acquisition software to do automatic focus throughout the night. So Nina is great for that and uh, yeah, hopefully it'll do well tonight. So as always, I still need to wait for the sun to go down and uh, then I can start my imaging session. Session? Se <laughs> I need to wait for the sun to go down before I can start my imaging. So uh, I'll catch up with you guys in a bit. And uh, then I'm going to start taking some awesome data on the Andromeda Galaxy. Let's do a quick rundown on the gear that I'm going to be using tonight. So in front of me, I have my Celestron 8-inch Raza that shoots at f2.8. Uh, that's sitting on top of the Skywatcher EQ6R Pro mount. Um, on top of the telescope, I have a Orion 50mm guide scope and a ASI 120MC camera. Uh, just behind that is the mini PC and power box. And at the back of the telescope, I have a red dot finder and an autofocuser. And the camera that is inside of the dew shield is the ASI 294MC Pro camera. This is an OCS camera. Uh, I've used it many times, and I uh, plan to use it again tonight. The sun's taking forever to set, so I'm going to go inside and play some Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2. Uh, this is a new release of the classic games on N64 and PlayStation, so I'm going to go have some fun before I get out here.
Okay, so the sun is just about set and the moon is coming up. Uh, I'm gonna open up Nina and see if I can connect all my devices, start at PHD2 guiding, and do all the other stuff that I need to do to get the night started. So let's uh, start by opening up Nina. Okay, looks like everything's uh, turning on and, and working as expected. I know I have to connect things in PHD2 guiding and then start looping, so let's do that. We'll unpark the telescope and start looping. I'm not going to be choosing a star just yet because I don't need to. So let's minimize this. Okay, default gain. Let's set this to 120 unity gain. Make sure that's uh, right. Uh, let's cool my camera if possible to minus 20. Actually, we'll do minus 15. Okay, looks like the camera settings are set up. Uh, it's gonna be cooling, and uh, it looks like it's connected, and I'm gonna be using 120 gain, which is unity gain for this camera. Uh, let's hook up the focuser and see if we can do that. Looks like it connected to the focuser well, too. That's good. It is reading the last focus that I had. This was from my last session, this 14022. So that's good, I don't have a, a rotator. The telescope, let's make sure that is set up. Looks like PHD2 guiding is also configured. I don't have any switches. I don't have a flats panel that I'll be using here, so I'll skip that and whether I'm, I'm not too worried about. It looks like I might be ready to start uh, trying to find an object and then slew to it. So let's go to the Sky Atlas and start searching for M Andromeda Galaxy, M31. Alright, now I'm going to start building out my sequence. Uh, so again, thank you Sai for showing me how to do this. Uh, I shouldn't have too many troubles doing it. I'm not going to do a delay on start. Sequence mode is going to be one after another. Uh, start guiding and slew to target will be on when I initiate this. And I'd also like to uh, center target and use plate solving. Hopefully that part works. Uh, for autofocus settings, I'm going to make it autofocus, I think, maybe every 30 minutes or so. Thirty minutes, yeah, it's already set to that, so that's nice. I'm not going to do it on filter change since I don't have a filter. Um, no progress. Total number. Let's do 300. Time. I'm going to do 30 seconds. Uh, one times one binning. Dithering we're going to turn on. Make sure that's on. And dither every three frames. Okay, I think I have everything I need to start slowing to this object. Kind of nervous, but uh, let's see what happens. All right, so the telescope has slewed to M31, the Andromeda Galaxy. It's doing some plate solving right now and then some minor adjustments. After that, it should focus and then start taking some subs. Uh, the Nina software was very easy to use. I only had one issue where I had to um, input the right directory for the images to be saved, but after that, it was set up to go. Um, again, huge thanks to all the YouTubers out there uh, using this and suggesting this to me, as well as providing content that I can use to, you know, troubleshoot issues and, and figure out how it works. Alright, so I just finished uh, getting everything set up in Nina, um, but while I was doing the plate solving, I noticed that my camera is not aligned properly. The Andromeda Galaxy is going up and down and instead of going side to side, which I want it to be. Once it's done doing its sequence right now, I'm going to stop it and try to rotate that uh, camera and then I'll do the setup again and let the session run. So far, our first impressions with Nina are, it's pretty great. Uh, I love the UI. Everything is very easy to find and uh, all the settings are there that you need. Um, it's very easy to turn things on and off and get things connected. I'm very impressed. Uh, I think I'll be using this going forward and uh, I think I'm gonna throw APT out. 
I never bought APT in the first place, so I don't think there's gonna be much of a loss there. And this is open source software, which is free. So I think it's a good trade. is about over and uh, my data is crap there's nothing else I can say uh, but that's okay though because um, I'm used to processing crap uh, living in Toronto before uh, all my data before was light polluted so um, yeah that's nothing new when I was uh, poking around in Nina I was seeing settings for filter wheels and weather applications and other things that I can only imagine using in the future it really makes me excited for getting back home and setting up a potential observatory in the backyard while I was watching the night sky tonight, I noticed that the Pleiades was uh, over the mountains and they were slowly going up. So I was able to get a bit of a time lapse, but man, that moon is so bright. Anyways, this is the last you'll see of me tonight. Uh, we're going to be on the road again soon. Uh, our next destination is in BC again. We said at the beginning of this trip that we would try to dip down into the States to skip a winter, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. The US and Canadian border is still closed and uh, yeah. We had to think about some other plans as to where we were going to stay. Fortunately, we were able to scoop up a place on Victoria Island and uh, we're going to be staying there for the winter. We're told that they don't get too much of a winter there, so we are kind of skipping it in some sense, but uh, it will be cold. Um, but yeah, hopefully not too much snow. We'll be back on the road in spring and at that time we'll decide if we can get into the States. We might go that route and uh, try to get back into Ontario through going through the States. Man, it's cold or uh, we're gonna stay in Canada and just tour Canada again and just try to uh, hit up some spots that we haven't hit up before. Uh, anyways, that's all for another time. So uh, yeah, clear skies and uh, I'll see you guys soon.